Swag that shit from the GameStop dumpsters. Oh, it was Lost Planet. It's a little steel edition. Yeah, one of the first nice things I found. So hello, welcome to a little video I've been wanting to do. My tips and advice and such on dumpster diving at GameStop. Now, this is a very common question that pretty much anyone on YouTube who does dumpster diving gets, and I have had my first one. It means progression. But anyway, some of this stuff is obviously common sense in my opinion, but you know, there are some tidbit things that you might not think of, and I do have some recommendationable information that might help you if you're actually interested in this. So, very first thing is, of course, to double check to make sure it is legal in your area. While as America as a whole has a law that basically says they don't give a shit, states and cities can have individual laws that can hindrance or outright make it illegal. But for the most case, usually it is legal as long as it's not locked, fenced in, or has any signs do, um, any signs saying like no trespassing or no dumps, uh, dumpster diving. Now, that's how my area is. Now, like I said, though, there can be laws that outright just say no. So, obviously, if you don't go and ask or find out, you're taking the risk, though. But for the most part, uh, for the most part, in America, at least, it's okay. But, again, cities and states vary, so you'll want to check that. Now, if you live in a completely different country and you want to do this to like GameStop's EB branch which is what uh, most GameStops are called in Canada and Europe I believe I think they're called EB games still in Europe aren't they? Not sure but I, I know GameStop owns them now so either way whether they didn't change the brand or not they're still technically GameStop now but either way, uh, if you want to do it in another country, uh, I know absolutely nothing about that. So, sadly, again, I would have to recommend checking if that's okay. But if it is okay, don't necessarily think that means you're just in the, co you know, the complete clear. I want to tell a little story about this. So in my area, I've said, you know, I when I first started, I was doing two locations. The one near me, and the one near my parents when I go visit them and usually do my thrifting. The one up here near me, I don't do anymore because the a unforeseen element I didn't think about. I didn't think or even consider it because I just figured they wouldn't give a shit. But this is something I'm going to throw out there as advice. So most GameStops usually are in those kind of multi-rent buildings. And they'll be like... Domino's, cell phone company, doll store, doll tree stores and shit in them. Now, those rent complexes, they usually have a, a guy, a guy or girl, <laughs> a guy or girl who takes care of the property. In other words, cuts the lawn, cleans the parking lot and that, and if you, if your game stops at a place like that, you need to keep that in mind, because that is not why I kept in mind. There was a guy who takes care of the lawn in that area, and I never even considered him. But on uh, one day, he approached me, claimed he saw me four times, and he said that if he caught me again, he would call the cops. Now, of course, I told him that I looked up the law, and I looked up what was okay and not, and I told him that stuff. So the next time he caught me, he did catch me again. I I was doing some different. I was trying to be a little more considerate. But at the time, I didn't know who he was. I thought maybe he was another diver trying to scare me away or something. But it came... I realized it was the guy taking care of the lawn when he came and poached me again. I realized that. And I asked him about that, and we had a civilized conversation, and he also pointed out the smallest fucking sign I've ever saw, but a sign saying that no dumpster diving. So he was very nice to, you know, at first when I said I did not even see that, though, I mean, it was small. It was really, small. it's literally like the size of this DS case. It's like the size of it. it, it, it 
and it was in the most stupidest spot, in my opinion. I mean, I would have at least put a reflector on the it to, you know, draw your attention to it, but whatever. But, after having a civilized conversation, we came to the conclusion, an, a mutual understanding, you know. He was being harassed, yes, he was being harassed by the mandrel. And I personally found that very surprising, because the mandrel, the one at Neo Me is the person who does me special favors that got me a complete edition of Hexus Force of Class of Heroes and has found and assisted me in getting shit that's like on the other side of America shipped over here for me because that just happens to be the only GameStop that has a copy and it's really fucking hard to get and is expensive but with GameStop it's cheap as fuck. So I was really, really surprised by that, and I did tell him I knew her, but I, I never knew her to be a bitch. Uh, he did clearly tell her, or tell me she was a bitch. And I said, well, it's probably obvious that she ain't gonna act like that with customers. So he's like, well, she's a bitch. So, you know, I, I apologized if I was causing him trouble. You know, I work in a factory. I deal with jackasses who are like, you need to do this and this much time, and anything that's not in that is unacceptable and shit, you know. So, I can understand getting a lot of pressure on you. So, I don't go to that location, because I, I, can, I can respect that, you know. But, again, if that sign wasn't there, I could go. But that was a sign, so it is now technically illegal. So I don't go there anymore. But the other one, near my parents, I have not seen someone who takes care of the lawn. There might be somebody who takes care of the parking lot, possibly. The reason I don't think there's anyone who does the lawn where my parents are is because it's just a giant paved location. The only grass anywhere remotely near it is behind the building where there's nothing but a forest, which obviously they're not going to do anything with because nobody's going back there. <laughs> so, I have not seen someone who takes care of the building there. But of course, up there I've been going early in the morning, where well, up here I was going late at night after the, the store closed. So, I wanted to kind of share that experience to give you an idea that you need to be more aware of simply other store walkers or that. Because you don't know who really doesn't care or they're going to come in your face and say, what the fuck are you doing? You don't really know. Because, I mean, um, if you check out different YouTubers who do dumpster diving, you know, you can find a few that have encountered police and... Like, with one, police are just like, Hey, you find any goodies in there? Or anything interesting? No? Okay, well, you two be safe. Don't do anything stupid, please. And then there was times where there's, like, the cops like, What are you doing? You setting fires in there? You trying to rob shit? And then, like, you know, harass the person for, like, 30 minutes. I mean, obviously, I can understand the cops, especially if you're in the middle of the night coming to make sure you're not doing any wrongdoings. But it's really fucking stupid when, you know, you're clearly all savaging things and you're giving this third degree born and they're not doing anything illegal if they check the laws, which uh, the few times I've, I've seen two of them get born by cops and they claimed in no areas that it's legal. So I, I can't disprove because obviously I don't know where they're living or that. So I have to take them for their ward. But... <laughs> basically i mean obviously you know if it's legal you know it's legal but sadly even if it's legal you got these people that have this weird mindset that you're fucking either horrible or something or just so many different mindsets just because you're saving some shit from a landfill or even you know like look i i got and i'm gonna change these out occasionally throughout videos i got all the posters i kept there's multiple layers of them, and I'm going to change them out, kind of give something different eye-catching there in the corner. But it's like, you find things you can decorate your own place with, you can find endless cases. That's why I have these here. I mean, seriously, these are all the freaking cases I've kept. PS3-sized cases, regular DVD-sized cases. The ones on this side that I'm nodding my head to are all multi-cases that have uh, a thing in the middle. And I also have another one of those cases that can hold four discs. 
And then everything on the top here is just DS cases. And those are just the ones I've kept, cleaned, and wiped off the stickers and shit. Which sadly, some of them sometimes turn out like that from using the magic eraser. But it's usually not too noticeable unless there's a big glare on it. But luckily, a lot of them don't always end up like that, so. Besides, most of these ones, I'm keeping for the GBA slot. Because I hope to do, like, custom arts in them. But anyway. But, like, you know, it's like these, it's like, you're, you're saving, like, I must have gone through over a thousand cases. And these are just ones I've kept. And I've only used a few, changed out a few of mine and that. But they they throw out so much fucking paper and cardboard and plastic and actual games and the walking accessories. All going to a fucking landfill. To what? For years and years. Probably way past my own lifetime. Still wadding in that fucking landfill on this earth. I mean, I, I don't really get the whole fucking thing. You're going to find people that have a problem. Whether it be a GameStop employee or be one of the other stores, cops, or complete strangers. So, of course, you'll most likely want to do it before or after hours of GameStop in that general area. Now, the one up here was near Walmart. So, technically, it was impossible to be there without no one being around. Because, you know, what the, almost every Walmart now is open 24-7 practically, so that would have been impossible there. But, like I said, up here, I was doing it after hours, and the one near my parents I was doing before hours. So, it actually gave a different kind of perspective towards, I think, the morning's a much better time. Because, for one thing, it's in the morning. Now, of course, it would vary on location, businesses, and such. I mean... It's really good because there's nothing behind it. So, you get there, nobody's in any of the stores, and you just get whatever you want and leave. As opposed to one up here, where Walmart is directly looking down the alleyway where the dumb store is. So, I mean, obviously that kind of stuff varies, but I kind of feel like there's advantages in the day. Because for one thing, you're in the day. You don't look as suspicious. You know, at night, you have more of a, hey, is that guy breaking in that building kind of thing? Because, I mean, that that's something, you know, you would more likely do at night than in the morning in broad daylight, at least in America. In Japan, supposedly, uh, the morning time is actually one of the most uh, likely times of getting robbed or something like that. Something like that. I... Uh, Obviously, I've never been to Japan, so I can't even... I think there was a question in Persona 4, actually, too. But anyway, I'm, I'm detracting here. So, obviously, whether it's legal or not, you're going to have people who don't give a shit about your rights. Obviously, if it's illegal, then you don't have a lot of leg room. But if it's, if it's legal and not illegal, if it's legal, you're still going to have... So, know what time the places you're going to look at. And also, kind of note the ones around its time. Because, you know, they they may have completely different schedules, and they might be, like the dollar store at the one up here, lingered for an hour and 30 minutes more after the GameStop closed. But I generally just didn't care. I have only saw them once, and I just told them I was looking for cardboard boxes. Because I was uh, moving. And believe me, you will find endless cardboard in... All those dumpsters, Willie. <laughs> this this literally nine percent more cardboard than fucking actual trash. I mean, it's it's crazy how they just don't even recycle it. It's boom. But anyway, that's just kind of what I have to say. But if you do get encountered with something, you know, your only real weapon is to throw out your knowledge that it's legal, what you what you researched, and if I would only recommend doing this if you actually have confirmed it's legal. You could also say that you've talked to the police. Now, obviously, if you haven't, you want to be a little careful. 
But if you did conform in your state or with the actual cops, which of course would be more performable, that's legal, then, you know, it's not necessarily lying per se, like not to the fullest degree, if you know what I mean. But you could also throw that in your face, in their face, in that situation. Now, the what's interesting is the guy who was catching me at the one up here, he, his rebuttal to it was that they were cycled this stuff for extra money. Which would be a smart thing to do if they actually were cycled. A quick call to the people who pick up the dump stores, which usually is easy to identify because usually they're labeled with the company and shit, can quickly answer that question very simply. And that's what the cops, because I actually asked the cops up here about that. Now, I didn't word it or say I was going to GameStop, but I said that uh, if I saw like a couch or a TV or something, and it was with the trash, and I wanted to get it for like the needy or the homeless or for the goodwill or something, can I just take it? And they said that primarily they don't encourage it if they recycle. So if they don't cycle, then thus it's okay, is what the cop said. So I checked with him, and that's, that's ironically the same day he caught me the second time, and we talked, and he, he showed the really small sign in that. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's what it is, you know, it's, it's a bit of a gamble game in that it's fairly unlikely you're going to get arrested and thrown in jail unless there's like some really serious law about it. I mean, most people, for the most case, do think like this, that, you know, you're just simply salvaging shit. But, you know, like I said, that ain't never once thought. But anyway, it's time to get the more meat of recommendations. So, of course, common sense would be you want gloves. But I would make two recommendations on that. You can get exposable wobblish gloves, which will... Of course, very useful, because you're, you're digging through trash. But to also add on that, I would recommend wearing an extra layer of gloves, some kind of leather cloth material that's more thickle than wobble, this thin little wobble gloves. And the reason I would wear that when you're primarily going through the dump store is because you're going through a dump store. You have no idea what's in there. Now, the likelihood of coming across, like, needles and drugs and a dead corpse are very unlikely, but not impossible. Not impossible. I mean, the first time I went to the one near my parents, there was a white car that came by, and a lady came out, threw some trash away, and drove away. Who knows what was in that bag? It could have been a dead puppy in that bag, or just shitloads of illegal drugs, you know? You, you don't technically have a guarantee of what's in that dumpster. Now, luckily, the GameStop near my parents don't share those with anyone, which is something else you want to kind of study it once you find a dump store you're looking for. Uh, who pertains those stuff in it? Because, like, the one up here near me, the uh, cell phone company thing that was right next to them also shared the dump store. So there was their trash and the GameStop's trash. And most actual trash was coming from the cell phone company. Good lord, do they eat so much fucking McDonald's. My goodness. But anyway. But if you're lucky and they don't share it with anyone, or they share it with someone that doesn't throw lots of food away, you'll have a lot of simpler time and be a lot safer for it too. Because obviously the less people using that dumpster, less likely you'll find weird materials like that. Now it's not, it's simple to say, I've never came across any of that shit, and I hope I never do. But of course if you're like in New York City or something, and you're wanting to do this, that probably has an increased likelihood of that. So, you know, keep that in mind. You want to you be safe. A lot of people on YouTube you see doing live dumpster diving where they either have their camera in their car pointing at the dumpster while they're going through it, or they have a friend that... They, you see a lot of them without gloves, and I don't recommend that. Even Tales of Tyler, who doesn't wear gloves, recommends wearing gloves. I definitely recommend gloves because you'll... Depending on who's throwing away trash is how nasty it'll be, but I primarily wear them for safety more than dirtiness. Because, like I said, now that I just to one dumpster, it's like 90% cardboard, like 1% 
trash food like stuff which is usually a domino's box or very little wendy's food and then the rest is just the advertisements games cases plastic and all that shit so, I mean, there's primarily really no actual trash really in there. There's very little. Like, the worst thing I came across was a McDonald's cup that still had shit in it. It still had, like, Coke or something in it. That, and that's about the nasty thing I found in there. Not really that nasty, obviously. But, I recommend gloves, of course, for safety. Now, a very useful utensil you can get, varying on your time. Now, since I said I come in the morning at the other one, it's usually always daylight. But when I was doing it up here at night, I bought a hat, which sadly is not getting a lot of use now. But it's a hat, and this isn't it, obviously. But I got it at Lowe's, and it has two lights here, and it has a battery thing that's in the back part that's stuffed in there and it has a button here and you can turn it on and bam light absolutely a must if you're doing it at night very recommended because believe me when i first started this i was using a hand big oversized flashlight thing and it's just hard going through shit and trying to angle it somewhere like on the edge of the dumpster or on the lid or something or holding it with one hand it's like it's just so simple and frees up both your hands and then you're not worrying about balancing and shit because obviously depending on the kind of dumpster that dumpster up here is huge it's like as tall as me and it's huge i had to literally climb in that one now the one near my parents is small it's probably like probably about like this high and probably to the one side to about heel on the size so it's very easy to just get in roll around and everything if you want to no need to actually get in and you wouldn't be able to even get in anyway because it's hard enough for them to stuff all the fucking cardboard in there anyway but if you're doing it at night, that's a very useful thing. There are some people that have these kind of strap things that go around your head. And it has a, a light thing right on your forehead. That can work too. But I do recommend getting some kind of head light device if you're going to do it at night. Or very early in the morning where there is no daylight. But if you're doing it early enough where there is daylight, you shouldn't need a light. Because... You know, generally it's not really hard to tell what's what unless you're dealing with a lot of the other stores mixing in their own garbage in with them, which sadly uh, a common one is usually Domino's sharing with them, which is why I said I'm very lucky uh, not to have to deal with that. Now, here are some things to look for. Now, if you look at my dumpster diving videos, or well, actually, you know what? You know what? Well, actually, I don't have the battery on the back. If I had my battery, I could have just took it. I'm using the plug, so shit. Damn, didn't plan very well. Well, if you look at my dumpster dive videos that have the posters and that, the the box they're in, it's a really big, thick box that has a lid part that opens. You want to look for those boxes if you're looking for the ad stuff, usually. Like the big posters and that. Now, here's a tip, and I got this from GameStop themselves. Uh, I got it because I asked for that Persona Q poster because they fucked up my uh, Persona Q's uh, limited edition thing that had the case and the art book and that, and the, the cards. So I asked if I could actually have that when they're done with it. And they, they actually told me, I asked them when, and they went into nice detail on how that works at least for the stores here i'm not sure if this goes for the others but it would make sense so apparently the first weekend of a new month is when they were supposedly supposed to get their new ad stuff to decorate the store with so generally that weekend or sometime the next week is the best time to find that now, of course, depending on your time, when trash pickup is and your schedule and that of trying to catch it, usually they throw that shit back in the box. 
Now, the last time I went dumpster diving and I got that stuff, for some reason, they weren't in that box. And I'm not sure if maybe they're catching on to me being in now. That might be a possibility, or maybe the employee just carried them out there and threw them now because they were lazy. I don't know. Well, technically, that wouldn't be lazy. That would actually be boarding your... Border, uh, giving you more work instead of having a simple box to throw away. But anyway... Usually they throw them back in those boxes, and every other time I've always found them in those boxes. So that's what you usually want to look for for most ads. But don't always overlook some of the other boxes. You can sometimes find posters still slipped in some of those thin boxes. So you want to be a little thorough. But you don't want to be too thorough, because you don't want to linger too long either. I mean, again, depending on your location, time, and what kind of stuff's around, you, the longer you're there, the more likely somebody might bump into you. Now, there are nice people. I met my first time a fellow uh, dumpster diver. Ooh. A fellow dumpster diver. Um, I think it was the week before Thanksgiving. I met a really old guy in a wickly red truck. And he said he looks for stuff for the poor. To donate to the poor. So, he was very nice, and, and I actually even told him about the story up here, and he said that guy's, you know, there's a special place in hell for those people. <laughs> but, but whatever, but, you know, it, don't always get so panicky if you see someone. Um, obviously, looking panicking is going to make you look like you will feel it. And it is hard to do, believe me. I've been seen three times. Not counting that guy up here that took care of the lawn. A, they were walkers of the other stores. So I know it gets a little... But, you know, if you get into a conversation, you want to stay calm. You know, try to give a reasonable story. I usually just say, which the two times they've approached me, I just said, I'm looking for boxes. And... I, I heard there's a lot of boxes over here from packaging stuff in there, and it's hard to really discredit that. There's crap loads of boxes in GameStop, Doll General, Doll Tree. There's shitloads of cardboard there, so that's kind of hard to discredit and be like, don't give me that. But have a decent built story, you know, that sounds fine, then. and be calm, be nice, and be polite. Because... Most of the time, these people don't really give a crap. They just, you know, they don't want you burning down the building or something, you know. Because, sadly, they're all jackasses who do that. I mean, they're all people who've light, light dumpsters on fire and shit. So, obviously, that's sad that happens. But, you want to remain calm. Be careful on that. Now, bringing a friend is both a smart thing... It doesn't really have much of a downgrade, really. They can help you get stuff through, like, see through it faster and that. And it's safer, of course, especially if you're going at night. Because, you know, by yourself, going behind a building, I mean, most of the time you're going to go behind the building for the dumpster. You know, by yourself in the dark, especially if you're in a big city or something. It seems like a likelihood of somebody being like, hmm, ching, da, 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 da. Not to stereotype big cities or anything, but you you obviously do want to keep in mind your safety in that. Again, you don't want to linger too long. I mean, usually, um, and this is actually another type. You're if you're going to if you if you're going for cases or wanting to look for games, don't waste time opening the cases, even if you don't want the cases. I don't recommend searching each individual one on site. Have a container of some kind. Um, I have two types of containers. I have a big green container. I got it at the Goodwill for like two bucks. And I also got this kind of mesh wed thing that uh, it's probably for laundry or that, but it collapses. It has a metal wire that helps it store um, that pop open and it has two straps to hold it down so it's very really compactable. But. Uh, you can see those in my dumpster diving videos, but I just bring one of those and just 
throw all the cases I find, just throw it all in there and take the whole thing. Do not waste time. I do not recommend wasting your time searching all the cases on site. I mean, I understand if you don't want the cases and you're just looking for free games, if you're in that case, um, it's more for your own safety just not to be lingering there very long. Because once you get caught, you sadly end up in my position where you have this endless paranoia if you're suspicious they actually know you're doing this. Like, huh. Like, I found two games and they were really scratched up, but they weren't, like, cut. So I was like, hmm, I wonder, because all the other games I found were never damaged. And then I found, like, 11 games, and they were all fine, so. But you always keep getting, having this kind of suspicion. Because, I mean, it's not like they don't have the right to destroy it. They can destroy all the shit if they want, you know. And obviously, you don't want them to destroy the stuff if you want to find the stuff. Now, they're not going to obviously take every individual case and break it, but they can snap the discs. They can whip the advertisement if they want. It just all depends how much fucking asshole they are. But those are some of my tips and thoughts. If you got any more questions or anything, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you all later. Praise the sun.